Okay, students, let's get down to business. Now, obviously, students, today is Valentine's Day. And uh, a lot of you are looking for love in all the wrong places. And uh, the problem with this university and most students on this campus is that you give love a bad, bad name. A what? Yes. I am. I'm rushing to Jesus. Well, I've been here for a while. Yes. Now, back to love, students, and why you know nothing about it. The problem with you, students, is you think love is just a feeling. You think love is when somebody just gives you some roses. Students. And especially the women, you know, they're very emotional. And women, just because somebody gives you a flower does not mean he loves you. Students, sometimes these guys will give you flowers so they can just get in your pants. Yes? Sometimes they'll give you a flower and a hug so they can have the sex with you. And students, Valentine's Day. Now, for your mother, that's okay. But be careful because some of you, you might be fooled by the motives of these guys. And uh, so uh, be alert. That's why you got to know what real love is. Real love is sacrifice. And you know, you think some guy, if he just uh, plays some cute song to you, if he gives you flowers, gives you a hug, that he loves you. Uh, yes, that's what I'm saying. So you got to be watch out for the guys who are trying to seduce you. What about girls trying to seduce you? That's what you're you? doing. That's what I was going to say. Okay. And today, in 2017, the girls are just as bad. Yeah. Guys, I want to warn you about the women who are trying to seduce you on this campus. Oh, thank you. Who are trying to have sex with you. I am in fear. Well, they're in this crowd right now. They kind of want to stay anonymous, probably. But a lot of these girls, I heard, have been getting down and dirty. Uh, they haven't been uh, living uh, holy for Jesus Christ. So, students, we're here to tell you about true love. Yes. And if you have ever wondered what true love is, students, you're looking at it. Uh, we're here to exhibit true love by telling you the things you don't want to hear. Uh, we're here to tell you the hard things. Now, I understand all your life, you know, you've been lied to. You've been babied. You've been living in your mama's basement. But now you're kind of coming into the real world. Jesus told you to love everybody, and that's what's important. That's true. I, I agree with that woman. He also says the now. And uh, so, yes, we love you. Whoever you are, we even love the Democrats. Yes. Yes. Uh, we care about you people. That's why we're here. We want you. Uh, we want that you would be really loving people. And uh, Bible says this is the love of God that you keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. Now, how many of you are keeping God's commandments? All of them. Okay. Well, there's more to just murdering. The Bible says, if you hate your neighbor, you're a murderer. Now, if any of you guys hate me, you're a murderer. I don't hate you. I don't even know you. Okay. If you don't know me, let me introduce myself. My name is Brother Mikkel. What's your full name? What's up, brother? It's on this card right here. Uh, brother Mikkel. Yes. So, wait, so your parents named you Brother? No, that's when you're a Christian, you become brothers and sisters in Christ. That's true. So, are you a Christian? Actually, I am. You are? I am. Which one are you? Which one are, are you the good one, though? Is there a bad one? Yes, there are fake Christians all over. They say they claim to be Christian, yet they're doing the sin. You're a missionary? Are you still a missionary? Okay, I see. I see, no, you can keep it. I let, I let you. You don't want it? Okay. Okay, she wants it. Okay. Now, you're doing this thing called vaping. Yes. Yes. 
Yeah. Now, what is that about? Um, boredom. I like the clouds. <laughs> I, I like see those. I like doing those. Okay. Well, see. Now, do you smoke? No. Do you smoke other stuff? Yeah. You do? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, that's honesty. That's good. So uh, at least you know you're not gone so uh, way off line. Now, so let me guess. Let me guess. You do the marijuana. No, I smoke marijuana. You smoke marijuana. I don't do it. Okay. Well, that's what I mean. Like, inject it. Whatever you guys do these days, I don't even know. And uh, so yes, you smoke the marijuana. Well, are you gonna smoke marijuana today on Valentine's Day? Actually, probably not. Okay. Now, do you have a Valentine? She's right here. That's my girlfriend. I met you yesterday, didn't I? Yeah. That's my girlfriend. That's your what? That's my girlfriend. But she's a woman. What? <laughs> and you're a woman. You're telling me? That for all this time we've known each other. Oh, see. Are you interested in women? See. Thank you. I'm here to help you. See, the problem is with you is you need a good man in your life, like Brother Mikel. Yes. Uh, actually, see, I didn't even know to straighten out some lesbians. Yes. They probably weren't gay to begin with. Yes. Uh, you know, once they saw Brother Mikel and saw what a real man he was, you know, they said, "Hey, maybe there is a." You know, maybe there are good men out there. But the problem with this campus, the problem with this campus is the, uh, not a lot of real men here. Uh, most of the people on this campus are just kind of like Justin Bieber, you know what I mean? Not real man. Uh, now, you are, you are a real person. Yes. <laughs> Students, you are a real person. But some of you have corrupted yourself. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Now, you would look nice in a skirt. I do look nice Actually, in a skirt. Look yes. And I look even better in, like, in a suit, too. Yeah. Because kind of from far away, I'll be honest with you. From far away, you can kind of think like you're a guy. You know oh, what I mean? happens all the time. And that's what I'm saying. You don't want to do that. See, you're a woman. You're designed differently from me. And uh, there's got to be distinction between male and female. Did you say that women are designed for males? Well, yes, females are designed for males. You got penis, you got vagina, and you got baby. Okay, wait, I have a question. I have a question for you, though. Now, hold on. Oh, wait, no, can I ask you my question? Okay, now, what is your name? My name's Kate. Kate, Kate I'm, Xavier. I'm Mikkel. Nice to meet you. Mikkel. Okay. Okay, I have a question. Question. Why is the G-spot accessible by fingers on women and the male's G-spot in their asshole? Okay, that is not true. That is not a... It is true. A G spot thing is a lie. No, no. Yes, no. it's it's all it's. If you don't it's, know it's, about it's it, all, I promise you, you haven't turned any. It's all a lie. Uh, no, uh, there's no G spot in the anus. It's just designed that you would have a good bowel movement, and that's what it's designed for. So your body is designed to work a certain ways. See, now you're you have a girlfriend that's a woman. Now that ain't right. That's that's kind of perversion. Now, uh, no, you can practice when you get married. Why is it? Why is it that right? But see, if you're having sex outside of marriage, you know, you're putting you're putting mileage on yourself, and nobody wants to buy a used car. No, everybody wants a new car. Well, you would do that is because you can't afford a new car, and that's what I'm saying. A lot of the people on this campus probably have like 200,000 miles on them already. With dents and scratches. Yes. The Bible's. Yes. I'm just giving an analogy over here. What? He's just giving an analogy. Degrading women? No. I love women. My mom's a woman. Yes. Yes. And mom is a girl. Raise your hand. And that's how you were made. And two women do not make kids. That's why. Now. Well, they can certainly raise them. Now, which one are you? L G B T Q R Z Y. I'm Kate. You're Kate. Okay, but that's your name. But what do you identify as? That's Kate. <laughs> yeah, but you. I see. I don't. I don't want to misunderstand where you're coming from. I'm Kate. Yeah, but which one are you? Are you like a straight up lesbian? I'm, I'm Kate. Are you bisexual? I'm trisexual? I, I, I like yeah. people. Wait. You love people. I like well, I'm just trying to figure out where Kate has come from. Where do you know where Kate is going? Kate is coming 
come from. Uh, and, uh, She's going to the same Christian. place you're going because you sin too. Uh, yeah. uh, we all sin every single day. Wrong. We all sin. Wrong. Isn't it, wait, wait, I have a question. Isn't it in your intentions, right? That's where like sin is based off of. It's like where your heart is. Yes, where is your heart, Kate? Where's my heart? My heart's in happiness. No. no. Kate, if you're not a Christian and you're part of the LGBTQ, you're okay. miserable. You know what? I am kind of miserable. You are. That's what I'm saying. You don't, you don't have the love of God in your life like I Brother do Mikhail does. I, you don't know my relationship with God. Don't say you do. Kate, you're crying on the inside. I am crying on the inside. Yes, you're that's why, that's why, you know, uh, because your life is miserable. No, when you become a Christian, you get the joy of the Lord. Uh, you're happy because, because I love capitalism. I lived under uh, communism. Yes, Russia. We're commies, dirty commies. But now, in the land of uh, capitalism, we'll be able to be productive. So yes, I'm a happy person because I know Jesus Christ. I, I, I disagree with you because I lived most of my life Jesus knowing the love of the Lord. And then you turn your back. Yes, I did. Okay, then you need to come back. Come back to the light. Okay, we're here to bring you back. We're here to turn you, turn you back to normal. Okay, let me tell you this, Kate. Okay, Kate, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. So get on your knees, cry out to God, and God will have mercy upon you. Yes, yes. But see, Christians are the best people in the world. They're the most happiest people. Because, uh, see, Brother Mikhail is the most, is the happiest person probably here. Because, because I'm special. And uh, see, students, you see, Brother Mikhail, I'm in love with a man. His name is Jesus Christ. And see, you need to be in love with a man. Jesus Christ. What's the question? Believe it or not, back in the day, I used to sin every single day. Wait, did you, I have a question, I'm sorry, I just want to understand. Have you sinned today? No. How do you know? How do you know? Are you a Christian? Because I have a clear conscience. Our conscience either condemns us or justifies us. So, yeah, perfect. so yeah, if you're not a sinner, then why do you need Jesus? I need Jesus Christ not only to forgive me of my sins, I need Jesus Christ to guide me daily. See, I don't use Jesus Christ just as a, a license to sin and say, hey, God, I'm sorry, and that's it. Uh, why does he need to forgive you? Well, because I sinned in the past. And I still could sin, but I choose not to. The Bible says if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, not when we sin. So uh, that's what... No, oh, I'm like loving on Kate over here. I'm trying to... See, a lot... Students, a lot of you, you've never been loved like this. Nobody told you the truth about your life. I'll show some love. Uh, <laughs> reality. It's a love that you have to understand. It's a love that is bigger than anything. And it's, it's hard to understand. Right, true love. But people mistake in love for lust. And ma many people think it's just lust. You just watch too much porn, that's why. Yeah, buddy. Uh, oh, no. See, that's perversion. That's why you're not satisfied. Because even with your sex lives, because you've been watching all the porns. Yes. You've been doing all kinds of sin and you're miserable. No, pornography perverts for you. And that's why you will never be satisfied in your life, because you don't live uh, the way God designed you to. What's my favorite book? Uh, probably Proverbs. the Psalms or the Proverbs. Oh, really? Yes. Mine is Hebrews 11. Like Hebrews 11? Hebrews Which one? Yeah. The faith chapter. The faith chapter. Okay, you, you think you're going to make it into the faith chapter living like this? Yeah. I don't think so. You don't think so? Yes, you got to be. These are the real heroes in Hebrews 11. Not like Bruce Jenner or all these wicked people or like Miley the Ho Cyrus. These are heroes. These are these are perverted people. Yeah, these people. Therefore, no condemnation now exists for those in Christ Jesus. Yeah, so you got to be in Christ Jesus. You calling someone a hoe in any sense is condemnation. You are just okay, guys, come on. Is Miley Cyrus a hoe? Who are you to judge? Who are you to judge her? Because I watched a video of her and I saw her exhibiting hoish behavior. 
and I'm, I came to a conclusion that ain't Chris. Yes, there's nothing wrong with judging. You judge good music from bad music. Yes. What is Jesus' greatest commandment to us? Uh, to love God. And the second? Uh, to love your neighbor. Yes, end of story. And so a lot of you students, you're not loving yourself and you're not loving other people when you're having sex outside of marriage with them. Why is it? I love you if you follow my character. Why are you so concerned about what we do in the bedroom? Because I'm a loving per. Because I'm a loving person. If sin is in our consciousness. Shh. Hold on, Kate has a question. If sin is in our consciousness and it's how we basically, if it guilts us or not, wouldn't love making be in the same tone? Yes, that love making. If we, if, we have, if we have that love in our heart, if we have that pure intention in our heart, does it apply regardless if we're married to them or not? We well, it does because... Now, wait, can I finish? Yes, okay. If, if we still feel something and we think we feel more than this, this simple lust because okay. I believe the difference between lust and love is that you start to you start to care about them more than you care about yourself. Right. And in the way that in the way that God cares about you, no? And right. so why don't you just transfer that love to someone else regardless if you're old enough or young enough to be married? Because simply at the point of, of our lives that we don't know what we're gonna do next. We don't know what's going on because you know we have all these outside forces coming in, right? Right, that's why you gotta control them. But one thing we can do, one thing we can do is Check this. Love. Right, and that's why you save yourself for marriage. It's all the time. Jesus talked more about hell than he talked about heaven. Jesus said, unless you repent, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Where's the verse? that when you come to people and you want to free them, <laughs> She has a Christian shirt. <laughs> yes, yes, that means I'm capable of speaking just like they are. <laughs> he says to do so and to not seek fame or to seek reverence from other people, which is exactly what you are doing right now. I don't think I'm seeking fame doing this. I think a lot of people don't like me after this. You are, primarily because you have yet to come down. You have a seat. Why are you, why? Why are we even here talking about this in the manner that we're doing it? Yeah, because this is what Jesus did. Sex is. Sex is. Sex is. Eat him up, eat him up. Go, Cass, go. Eat him up, eat him up. Go, Cass, go. He had won their hearts. And he did so by speaking to them justly. The way you are speaking is unjust. The way you are speaking is hateful. Jesus didn't use hate speech. When Jesus was talking to the woman at the well. Right. He in no way condemned her. He said you had five husbands. And the guy you're living with, he's not even your husband. So he was, he, was, he was shaming her bad behavior. No, he was not shaming her. He was presenting to her. <laughs> Jesus Christ was presenting to her her hoish behavior. Stop saying that word. Hoish? Please, not him on the And if it happened, we saw nothing, right, guys? Conversion. Right. And it is not through hate speech, and it is not through saying that someone is lower than you, that you are holier than them. That is not how you go about making people believe in our Savior. That is not it. Jesus said what you hear in the ears, shout from the housetops. That's, I'm just trying to obey Jesus Christ. I'm just trying to be heard. I want everybody to hear that Jesus Christ is the way. You're not doing it by telling them to go to hell. Now, you got John 3.17 on there. It says this. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's good. That's good. But after that is verse 18. Check this. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. And this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, 
So yes, you people hate the light because you're living in sin. Right, that's for the Jewish people. Uh, that's for the, we're talking about, we're talking about the moral law. We're talking about the New Testament. Sir, if you believe yourself equal, step down off the pedestal. I am equal, I'm just, you know, I want to. Step down off the pedestal then. That does not make me really equal. You're giving legitimacy to him as a Christian or as a person who's actually saying something that's logical. He's just doing this for the It's not real. No, I, I'm out here because I love you sinners. And I want the best for you. That is arrogance. And I want you to repent of your sin. What is your sin that you don't want to stop doing? Living. Living? Well, if you're not a... You done, sir. Hello. Hi. You have sinned recently. Hold on. I'm Brother McKellen. You are? I'm... Juliet. Nice to meet you, Juliet. I am not a Baptist Christian, although I did attend the Baptist church for most of my life. I am a Christian. However, I do realize that I do sin. Okay, stop it. Yeah, okay, shush, shush. <laughs> I do tell white lies. Stop it. Do, do my, does my ass look fat in these jeans? No. No, no of course not. <laughs> I'm not going to say, no, your fat ass does make you look fat in those jeans. <laughs> but we all sin in our own little tiny ways. Just because you have a tinier sin than I do. What's my sin? Well, you said ho. You're narcissistic. That's a curse That's word. A curse word. Right. Ho yeah. is not a curse word. It's kind of condemning people. That's the modern, the, the, the most biblical term, I guess, would be whore. Okay, okay, but have you sinned in the past seven days? I don't believe so. <laughs> now, can you, can, let me ask you this. Do you believe God's able to empower you not to sin anymore? Yes. Yes. And God has empowered me, and I want to obey God. I don't want to sin anymore. I don't want to have a guilty conscience. No, I want to have victory over sin. I don't want to sin, but... You'd never have to sin. It's always a choice. Sin is a choice. Human nature compels you to sin. A uh, human nature. You are a human, are you not? You are not Jesus Christ. Uh, kinda. You are kinda. You are not Jesus Christ. Yes. The other portion. Bible says I have the mind of. Christ. You know, I have the mind of Christ. I'm an alien. Technically, I am an alien. Eat him up. You guys go. <laughs> and yes, so there is no sin you can't stop doing. You can always obey God. You can always choose to love God. This guy. I know you can be just like Brother Mikhail. Well, you I don't can, want to be like you. You can be happy and holy. You don't have to sin every day. I'm perfectly happy the way I am. <laughs> now, what's your biggest sin, would you say? Well, let's see. Oh. <laughs> Anxiety. Yeah, well, the Bible says don't be anxious for nothing, but put your faith in Jesus says, Christ. Do not be anxious. Right, and so... There's one for every day of the year, and yet I have been diagnosed with generalized anxiety. I have Well, do you Well, do you go to church? Yes. Well, uh, you need some uh, counseling. See, Brother Mikhail, he's a soul doctor. <laughs> and, uh, I would not go to you. You wouldn't? I would not go to you. Okay, well, you're here right now, so see, sometimes what happens is when sin enters your life, it corrupts you. It gives you a guilty conscience. Uh, and you have no peace. Bible says there is no peace for the wicked. Then I guess sin gave me borderline personality disorder as well. Right, yes, that's what I'm saying. You're so, you're confused. You could be demon possessed. Who knows? If you find God, you won't have any mental disorders. Right. You have the mind of Christ. Jesus Christ will deliver you. You know that is completely fucking Oh. Okay, you just cussed. You're not a Christian. You're fired. Fuck you, man. Fuck you. See, that's the problem. You have sin in your life. You need to surrender to Jesus Christ. You need to embrace Jesus Christ. So, so there, there are people out there who are practicing Christians who have mental yeah, disorders. Have like what? I have anxiety, depression. I am Christian. My mother is a Christian, has been her whole life, has the pro 
question. What are you depressed about? I don't have to be depressed about anything, sir. Well, cheer up. I don't think that, oh, okay. Jesus Christ died for you. I don't think that's true.